week, and we haven't changed anything. So clearly, I've forgotten just how to what all the buttons do. And I counted up. I have thirteen, sorry, fourteen windows on my screen at the moment that I'm trying to manage. Uh, if anybody saw it behind the screens of the DNC switcher, that's what my life is kind of like. <laughs> this is Legends of the Drowned Isles, a uh, homebrew 5th edition D&D campaign uh, in which uh, I, as the uh, game master, have created an entire world and then <laughs> foolishly let my players loose in it. Speaking of my players, introduce yourselves, guys, starting from left to right. Uh, hi, my name is Pat. Uh, I am playing Silas Marsh, uh, a, a human illusionist who may not be exactly what he seems. It's the nature of illusion, I think, actually. Hmm. <laughs> hi, uh, I'm a uh, Marie. I play Annie. This is Akemi, who is adorable and wanting oh. snubbles. We have a guest. Uh, <laughs> Annie is a human rogue. Uh, and having a slight panic attack. I'm next, and I'm playing uh, Medrek, half-orc cleric, who he's is currently fine. going the wrong way. Oh, well, I was going to say, he's fine, but uh, aside from that small detail, uh, it's fine. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> We're all fine here. All right, well, let us find out where we are fine. Man, I have a lot of windows open. All right, let's see if I can do this. Oh, Akemi, don't eat my pencil. <laughs> what role is Akemi playing? Pencil eater? <laughs> Slightly, Oops. slightly, uh, yeah, dominated by cat. We'll see. All right, I'm, I'm right. sitting on her spot, so oh, well. or right beside her spot. So that's the. I deserve all of the climbing. <laughs> yeah, cat logic will be a subject for another another day. This is an alt campaign in Legends of the Drowned Isles, and an opportunity for us to still play, even though one of our original players couldn't make it for our original campaign. We'll be back at that campaign sometime in that vague future we all plan for. In the meantime, this is set in a different place a thousand years before the previous campaign. Uh, and a little bit of a recap of what happened last week. Having infiltrated the undersea compound of the Sea Devils, the group found themselves facing off with three of the creatures. One of them fled, but the others were dispatched easily. On the floor, the group discovered the bones of humanoid creatures that had apparently served as previous meals, confirming some of their suspic suspicions about them. Through trial and error, the group deduced that only one door in any room could open easily at a time, and especially if there was no water inside the room. There was also a cluster of semi-concealed rocks which seemed to act as a locking mechanism of some kind. As the group moved along the winding passageways, they discovered another room with another group of sea devils, this time guarding the spoils from shipwrecks and two humanoid prisoners. During the fight against the guards, Silas created a strange illusion of a tall, vaguely feminine creature with writhing snakes for hair and two large snakes as tentacles. This seemed to frighten the sea devils. Having freed the prisoners... They made introductions. One was a seamstress named Joan, traveling to travel, traveling to meet with her husband Holger Ibsen in Pitajun. The other was a sailor named Gitano, who was swept off the deck of the errant widow in the recent storms. Gitano retrieved his trusty cutlass from the boxes of treasure, and after hearing the group's trouble with a field of stingweed surrounding the building, he began smearing lamp oil found in a barrel nearby on his body as protection against the poisonous flora, thinking that they were leaving right away. But the group decided they should stick together until they found Harriet and the lighthouse stone. The narrow, small corridors and the door controls meant that the group had to split up. Silas went first, but as they moved through a corridor with three doors, ending, uh, with three doors it ended up with the rest of the group piling into the wrong room. Meanwhile, Silas heard a voice in his head, beckoning him forward. It called him a zagling, and seemed to be curious about his presence. Doors opened in front of him, and as he entered a room, a rather large cave-like room, and I'll go and I'll add a bit more description to this particular space. Uh, there were, it is a large cavernous room, which looks like it has side caverns off in it. Uh, in the dim light that you can see, there are shadows in every corner uh, accompanied with uh, thin web-like strands that seem kind of uh, silverish and black at the same time. 
In the room, you can make out two figures, one that stands directly in front of you, a feminine sea devil, but instead of legs, she has nothing but a uh, serpent's long, lithe body. In the other side of the room, there is a, a, a monstrous version of the sea devils you've seen so far. It stands a bit taller than all the rest and has four arms on his hip is a, a large trident attached by a chain. In the far end of the room, you can just make out the the uh, uh, another cage, some of the ones you'd seen before. And within it, a humanoid figure who you can't really make out from that distance. Uh, I'm on, on the uh, southeastern side of the room or on this map, um, you can also make out uh, piles of... Uh, well, let's just say piles of webbing at the moment. You had just entered this room, and the creature had addressed you, beckoned you come inward. She wanted to see the Zagli more for herself. Uh, well, I am walking in. <clears throat> I assume we're starting with that, or did you want to start with a different thing? No, we'll start with that. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's not going to move within, like, easy punching range, but uh, he'll walk in and and uh, look at her and say, how should I address you? There's an intense look that's returned to you and a bit of a, of a tilt to the head of curiosity. Um, you see her cast a spell. Uh, and then in in words that you can hear now in the open air from this point, you'd only heard in your mind voices from her. Curious. It is honorable, perhaps. I am Oxia. This is my home. What, Zagling, is your name? You may call me Silas. Silas. Strange. Surface name. I am from the surface. Are you? I think you are less than you think a surface dweller. Silas, uh... Hmm, I'm trying to think of the right words for it. Uh, Silas would look probably a little bemused at that. You may be correct. What brings... Why have you taken... Uh, what was the name of the woman that was kidnapped? Harriet. Harriet. Um, why have you taken... Uh, Harriet, the Lady of the Lighthouse. At first, at the name, she looks kind of non-responsive, but when you mention the Lady at the Lighthouse, um, she kind of nods her, her serpentine head a little bit. Ah, the Arokaling. <laughs> she was a surprise. I am pleased my brood brought her back, that I may once again taste the flesh of my enemy. In the meantime, what yeah. are the rest of you doing as you found yourself in that other room? It's a short room. There's another door at the far end. You're all kind of crowded into this space. You haven't caught up with Silas just yet. Seems like he must be moving faster than expected, or maybe because he has to move to open another door to get out of here. Maybe he's just beyond. Or he went the other way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a maze for you right now. Yep. Um, I'm going to say something along the lines of um, we need to be careful. Uh, we don't know where, where Silas went. Um, but underneath in Thieves Can't, it's actually going to be, they don't know who I am. Okay. 
I don't know who she is. <laughs> but I will focus on the buttons and I'll open the door. Okay. Um, Gitano at the back um, says to, we should make sure that, that uh, Joan is protected. I can handle myself in a fight, but uh, this kid, uh, oh, I, I, I'm not a fighter. Um, you mess around with the buttons. You kind of learned the sequence, or at least one of the sequences that seemed to have worked before. Uh, and you hear a satisfying clunk from the door itself. Do you reach down and uh, grab the handle? Yep. Okay. The handle moves fairly easily, indicating, as you've learned so far, that there's probably no water on the other side. There's certainly no vent or water in this particular space, almost as though uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't drain like the others. And as soon as you open up the door, you can actually see there's another uh, another vent in the ceiling and a, essentially a column which is in the center, which. Uh, 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 indicates that there's another vent there as well. The door opens easily. You see in sort of a triangular shape room, I guess you might say. You're entering on one of the sides of the triangle. You pile into the room. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, you still don't have access to the map, right, Marie? No. Okay. I will move you as appropriate. Once again, you do I see... I just can't move things without my entire thing breathing. Totally fair. As you move in, you do uh, brush aside some of the strange uh, flora. And you can I will actually almost feel a breeze as you walk by it. As it seems to be already generating air or continuously entering, entering uh, uh, adding uh, air to the room. Again, Tano steps to the end. All right. Um... I don't know how big this place is. Do you have a way to talk to your friend? At one time he spoke into our minds, but I'm not sure, like, how to do it myself. Yeah, I... That's not how I can talk to people. Okay. I'll just try thinking to Silas, like, Hey, Silas. No? Like, <laughs> Small amount where, of where did you go? Rolls out of Medric's ears as he thinks about it. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> the mind you have attempted to reach has been disconnected. It's currently engaged in something else. Uh, the door rolls shut behind all of you. Yeah. With a heavy thud. Uh, and you can. Yeah, actually, you're you're used to it at this point, uh, as you. Uh, sense a shift in the pressure of the air of the room. And for both uh, Annie and Medrick, you look up to realize that the uh, the uh, sphincter which holds the air in is starting to open and about to release the air from the room. Uh-oh. Hold on to something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll like, try to find, like, a rock on the wall to, like, hold on to, like, Okay. Uh, Joan sees your rather curious and alarmed state and asks, what's going on? And Gitano just says, whoa. This air bubble's gonna release. <laughs> and then we can't open doors for... Oh, no. Crap. Oh, well, let's go back. Joan doesn't have a way to breathe. Oh. Let's go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I open the door again, press the buttons. Okay, the, brush, the buttons do not move. As press have, them harder. Has, have seemed to have been locked in place by the process um. that's begun. Let's switch back to, oh. uh, to press the button. Silas <laughs> to give you a moment to think about that. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, that was... Some of the ads on, on my phone will take over the audio, and oh. even though I've got the sound switched off, suddenly oh, it starts God. blaring. Uh, That's annoying. Yeah, it's irritating. That is, that is wrong. So, um, so, Oxy just mentioned 
being capable or happy about being able to taste the flesh of her and mm. it more. Why did you take this, the, the fallen star? It was taken from us. It was our prize. A piece of God. Not a piece of one of your gods, though. No, even better. A stolen piece of a god. Or lost. Powerful. Useful. Our war would be served better with it. Your war, too, if you choose. Who are you at war with? The Aroka. But they seem to be missing. And the surface dwellers who wander across our lands. Who are the Aroka? I assume I haven't heard that name before. It's not a name that's familiar to you. Okay. She is Aroka. Or she sniffs the air a little bit. Not her for a while. Family. Enemy. You might know. Crude words. Sea elf. Not true. Mm. Older than them. The uh, other one that's standing there kind of mm -hmm. shifts a little bit. Uh, um, you, you probably read it as anxious, but not anxious, worried, or anxious as can we get this over with? And it, yeah, he sort of barks something at Oxia. Um, <sighs> Oxia just sort of hits back. Okay, um, Silas uh, is kind of scared poopless. Uh, but one of his traits is he always puts on an unflappable appearance no matter the situation. So he's going to pretend he's not scared. So proceed not to <laughs> flap. Okay. Uh, and he's going to as like force himself to slowly and calmly just walk over here and take a look. Okay. As though he's just monitoring the situation. Make a... Um... Let's call this a performance roll. I'll give you advantage because it's your trait. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you manage a reasonable saunter, um, kind of probably nodding a little bit to Oxia as you as you pass on by, and she's just sort of watching you curiously. Un, unconcerned might be the word she would use. As you walk over, you see this, this dim corridor. You can see that there are boxes of uh, what look like uh, dried uh, fruit that are semi-moldy, uh, smell a little bit, uh, that are off to one side. And inside the cage, you actually make out uh, the unconscious form of Harriet. He's sort of lying Okay, there. unconscious. Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, you um, presume she's unconscious because you don't see her move she's yeah. lying down um you could move closer or make a medicine check from about there to determine anything further uh he will move over and ask if she's still alive okay and as you get closer you can see that she does seem to be breathing yes mm. she lives much better taste alive ugly aren't they To each their own. And this one is ours. Hmm. Uh, as you kind of look back over your shoulder, look back towards Oxia, you do notice that there's a, a particular spot which seems to be darker than the rest of the room. Uh, it's it's mm. actually uh, sort of a, a creeping shadow which seems to be at the center of this sort of spiderwebbed area behind her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he'll walk back and... You so you offer alliance, do you? And then he'll try to walk closer and he'll just look at the spot okay. as though he's curious, because he is. 
Um, as you walk between the two of them, the, the larger one uh, kind of tenses a little bit, and you can see the two right arms grasp onto this trident, which is attached to his, his belt by a chain. Um, another hiss from Oxia, and he's still standing there with it and looking disdainfully down on you, but also not yet moving. Uh, but you can see him kind of stepping from foot to foot, almost trying to, to find his his, uh, his footing. Um, yes. A little bit of pee comes out, but uh, it's concealed by all the poison I'm covered in. <laughs> Thankfully, there's no water filling this room, so it's not, uh, you know, a, a, an embarrassing cloud. Uh, <laughs> Just a little bit. As you, um, as you kind of walk on by, uh, Oxia uh, nods uh, her, uh, again, serpentine head uh, to your to your question. Yes, do not wish to face Zagwatha, if not needed. We have goals the same, Zagwatha and us, destruction of surface dwellers. As you look closer, you can definitely detect a density in the darkness it seems to shift and shimmer a little bit in the in the small amount of light given off and the luminescence of some of the plants. Uh, at one point, uh, as you walk closer to it, uh, a, a semi-tendril uh, emerges from the darkness, kind of almost as though it is an eye, but there is no visible eye that sort of uh, moves up towards you and, and uh, only about a foot or so out of the darkness and kind of gazing at you. Then after a second of... of essentially boredom seems to drop back into the mass so did you say there was a glint or a glow in the darkness uh you don't see any glint or glow it's more that okay. the surface seems to be wet or slimy yeah and whatever little light that there yeah, there's very little light in here um slimy it's, darkness it's slimy mm. mobile you know semi-curious darkness <laughs> and with that thought let's switch back to the other group as the water Question. begins to pour, pour in, yes. Um, originally, Gaetano grabbed a chamber pot for him. Did he grab one for Jones, Joan as well? He did grab a couple of them, yes. Okay. Uh, I will give Joan my pearl and grab one of the chamber pots and put it on my head. Okay. Uh, as you reach in and kind of stick your fingers under your tongue and grip onto the pearl, uh, it comes off with a bit of pain. There's one point of piercing damage. Yep. Uh, and it's a little, kind of covered in a little bit of blood. Uh, but then you hold this out towards Joan, who looks like <laughs> kind of aghast, uh, not really sure what to go, what to uh, to do. And Gitano uh, kind of slaps his head. Put this under your tongue, it'll pinch. Gitano slaps his head. Of course, that's how you got down here. Uh, Joan kind of looks between you and Gitano. Make a persuasion roll with advantage, because Gitano is definitely... Uh, supporting your your idea. I feel like I have better constitution than the the random person. Uh, advantage persuasion. Uh, that is a eighteen. Okay, yeah. Between two plus uh, six is eighteen. Between the fact that you kind of just pulled this out of your own mouth, but very confidently hold it forward. And Gaetano's uh, sort of immediate acceptance, as if this is not surprising to him. Uh, Joan takes it from you kind of gingerly, the water now up, up above your ankles and starting to flow very quickly. I, I do let her know that it'll pinch. <laughs> so she kind of looks at you curiously. How do I... Uh, uh... Put it under your tongue. And I grab one of the, the chamber pots from Gaetano. Gaetano hands it to you. Uh... <laughs> the... It, imagine, if you will, uh, the sort of combination of fear of this seems like we're going to drown and someone just hand me their gum to chew. <laughs> <laughs> and Joan kind of gingerly uh, with a, an expression of, of, of somewhat disgust. Uh, you can see here very gingerly put the, the, uh, the pearl and just as it gets close to the, to the roof of her mouth, um, she jerks as it it kind of latches on. Um, you kind of realize that it, 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 while it is a pearl normally, there is a sort of extension, almost like the, like the, uh, uh, the roots of a, of a tooth, which uh, form on the bottom of it when it grabs on. 
and she kind of uh, uh, jerks a little bit, uh, breathes in, and, and kind of, uh, you can hear her kind of trying to comprehend how this is working. I don't, I don't understand how, oh, this feels really weird, and uh, oh, at least you brushed your t teeth this morning. <laughs> Now you'll be able to breathe underwater, and I put the the pot on my head. And the, the 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 pot is only about you know six inches deep, so it's not really that you can put the pot on your head. You kind of have to breathe up into it, uh, or at least you you will once the water reaches a certain level. Gitano puts her his hand on on uh, Joan's shoulder. Don't worry, kid. All you have to do is breathe normally. It should be fine. Uh, I was refreshed recently. That's yeah. Turning towards. All right. This air should be fine, then. Just uh, stay behind us and try not to panic. <laughs> Let's see what his persuasion rolls like. Because <laughs> when you realize, when you say something like, try not to panic, uh, it usually It causes a bit of panic. Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, she kind of looks at him and then just sort of look, closes her eyes and starts to breathe. But it's one of those trying to breathe deeply and slowly comes out <gasps> <gasps> and uh, she's having a little bit of a panic attack. The water... I like pat her arm and like hold on tighter to, to the wall. <laughs> the water now up about your knees. Um, Medric. Yep. Um, you can hear on uh, around the corner from you uh, mm -hmm. the sound of which is the familiar sound of what happens when the rocks uh, actually respond to a, uh, a essentially to the unlocking mechanism on the far door from you. Okay. Do you guys hear that? I think they're too busy with Joan at the moment to have really noticed. Okay. So this door should be open, in other words? Uh, that door should be unlocked. What do I hear on the other side? Stick your ear to it? Yeah. Make a persuasion check. Or a persuasion. Yeah, make a persuasion <laughs> check. Con <laughs> convince the door that you mean business. No, make a perception check, please. Perception. <laughs> scroll down. Words mean what I want them to mean. Doggone it. <laughs> okay. You're putting your ear to the door, and you know that I think all of you have tried this before, that these doors are fairly thick stone, so very little sound actually seems to transmit, transmit through them. But what you, you get is uh, something you have heard at least once before, and that is the, the sound is even more dense and deadened on the other side, which means on the other side of this door is water, not air. Oh. Well, Silas clearly didn't go this way. Uh, guys, there, there's water I mean, over Silas, here. Silas could have went this way, but because he can breathe water like the rest of you. But right, right. Yeah. Um. Well. So I'll press the buttons on this door, hoping that it unlocks the other door. <laughs> okay. You reach over and start smashing those. Um, they don't seem to move, as if they've already been engaged. But you know they're supposed to move. Are you going to try to force them? Yeah, I'll press the buttons harder. Okay. What, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Make a strength check. No. Okay. You, 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 you bash away at the at the uh, the buttons, uh, and find that they they don't move inward, but they are starting to jostle a little bit. And yeah. then you hear this sort of sound, like the sort of grinding almost of stone against stone, or possibly gear, something like that, as one of them seems to be half half bashed in. Um, unfortunately, with it kind of wedged the way it is, the other three of the cluster definitely don't move now. You're not sure what the effect of that is, but it's changed something. I'm just gonna not say anything so my friends don't think I screwed up. <laughs> well, there is a the sound uh, of smashing actually, rock. Yeah. <laughs> I just remembered I have pythons in my bag. 
Okay. So I'm going to grab some of those and like jam them into the wall so that we have something more solid to hold on to. Okay. okay. With the, 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 the water kind of rushing in or the, or really the air rushing outward, uh, you start hammering these, uh, these pythons. You have a, a hammer I'm assuming as well, or the crowbar, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and clang, clang. It makes quite a lot of noise in this small stone room. Um, but, uh, you managed to get, uh, let's say, two of them uh, locked in. Yeah. We will switch back over now to Silas. Still looking at the black, slimy orb in front of him. Uh, is it an orb or a cylinder or... A... It's amorphous. It doesn't seem... I, I can only really draw circles yeah. in there but it's not a round circle and it does okay. seem to be as you pay attention to it you can kind of notice that uh it 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 shimmers and moves uh kind of not maintaining the shape very long you admire my pet hmm i've not seen something like this before really i had thought your people to tame them as i have not in uh, our particular group, no. Mm, too long among the surface dwellers. Milo, come to me. And the shape unfolds, kind of spreading out like a, uh, a gelatinous um, curtain flowing across the floor. Uh, and kind of flows over to her. Uh, as it does, uh, you do get a glimpse of light as beyond um, where she was or where it was, uh, you do see the star stone. But the hmm. creature seems to to wrap itself around Oxia uh, and almost like a pet. Hmm. Uh, it forms pseudopods in different places and she, kind of uh, uh, pets it and strokes it lovingly. Uh, kind of almost creepily, though, as uh, you can see as it moves across her skin, it leaves not burn marks so much as as uh, cleans the scales, almost as though it's, it's consuming um, or leaving a little acid trail as it moves around. He How keeps... big is the star stone? Uh, it was about the size, a little bit larger than a football. Okay. Is it radiating heat? Um, not so much heat at the moment. In fact, you can kind of see that even the light that normally would be emitted by this thing has been dimmed, almost as though some of it has been absorbed or, or something. And as you kind of peer at it, you can see that there still remains some of this, this inky black gelatinous thing on it. Uh, almost uh, suffering it, it's, uh, or suffering it, almost um, suffocating it. Mm. It doesn't give off heat as such, but there is a little bit of light. So the room, yeah. the room would be a little bit lighter than than uh, than uh, dim darkness at the moment. Yeah, I'm just thinking about potential for uh, picking it up in the near future. Mm -hmm. um, so you use the creature to suppress the stone. Interesting. Intelligent. Uh, he looks impressed. It is darkness against light. Hmm. Do you know why I'm here? I suspect maybe you wished to have the Aroka or... You wish to have the stone. What is Zagwatha's wish here? I'm trying to think of how, uh, how to phrase this. Um, <clears throat> As you have noted, my people serve Mother Hydra, Sagwatha. A nod of, of recognition. 
she would like these. And he'll just <clears throat> languidly like point in the two directions. As though it's some minor thing. Hoping that the poison smeared all over him is concealing the sweating. <laughs> what would what would such a gift require in exchange from the other side of you the the taller one again sort of shifts and you can hear the 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 strange almost hollow sound of what you now realize is a coral chain that's uh, attached as he's kind of shifting a little bit uh, impatiently. Uh, Oxia. Um, uh, uh, I should make a, per a uh, deception roll for that too, because uh, I haven't been told any such thing. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Oh, nice. It's, it's a reasonable argument, you think? And she seems to be considering it. She's hard to read because the, the reptilian features don't give away a lot. You'd probably know, though, if she was really angry or upset. You're fairly convinced of that. Yeah, I would not be standing at that moment. Um, Oxia um, uh, kind of nods thoughtfully. And the creature kind of rolls off of her to go and cover the stone once more, which had been starting to brighten a little bit, as you kind of see that little wisps of the, of the creature had uh, almost melted off under the very force of the energy of this thing. Um, you had seen it when it was focused as a beam, um, and you're not exactly sure how it's being kept this way, but maybe because it is being suppressed in all directions and no longer focused, it may not be as strong. You're not really sure. Um, Oxia, uh, though, kind of nods her head, and it kind of dips back and forth as she seems to be considering we have what you wish, what Zagwatha wishes. This is good. We can form. Oh, God. We can form an alliance. Your assistance would be helpful. And beyond her, you can kind of see along the back wall now, uh, where the thicket of uh, of uh, webs was or is rather. You can see what looks like uh, something moving, and then you realize it's sort of a humanoid shape wrapped up in uh, in webs. Um, he'll walk over next to it and kneel down and say, what would you require of us in this war? assistance they'll start sort of pulling at the the uh, webs as well looking for like trying to open it look for a face okay as you what kind of assistance as you poke away at the uh, at the webs um you're probably taken back a little bit as dozens of little tiny spiders strange uh blue white little spiders sort of uh, writhe in and around the the uh, the, uh, the webs, kind of woken up perhaps by your your motion. You pull a little bit away, and you can see a uh, a uh, an eye that you've uncovered that kind of zooms in on you and looks terrified. To kill the village, of course. We'll switch back to the other group now. Water now about your waist. Yeah, I'm, I'm holding myself to this pipe. And... You managed I'm to get a, a couple of them to... there. Joan is also yeah. kind of holding on to one of them. Gaetano doesn't see. I'll hold on to the handle next to the door that I'm standing by. Okay. Ooh, I have rope. <laughs> so what are you going to do with the rope? Uh, tie myself to the python. <laughs> okay. It's a little bit awkward. The pythons don't really have a lot for a loop. They're really meant to be something you hang from. Um but uh, make a, a sleight of hand roll to, uh, or survival roll, whichever one you, you feel is more along your lines. Uh, I'll do sleight of hand. Okay. 
that is a nine. Nine. It's a good solid knot. It will not slip. Yo. Uh, you probably hand one bit of the rope to Joan as well, who's just sort of looking at this going just wide-eyed. Gitano uh, doesn't seem to have the same uh, same concern now that he sees that Joan seems to be taken care of. He's sort of idly holding on to this... Uh, this uh, uh, actually, he's not holding on to the uh, chamber pot. He's letting it float on the water beside him. Uh, mm -hmm. And every once in a while just sort of picks it up uh, or pulls it back as the water kind of shifts it a little bit further away. Medrick, you're doing something with the door? No, I'm just holding onto the handle. Holding it down or holding it up? Just holding onto it so I, I don't get like carried away by the water. Oh, okay. okay. Using, using it as like a grip point, basically. Uh, it's down on the very bottom of the ground, so you're kind of having to oh. double to, to, to bend over to grab onto it. And as you do, you realize your head is actually underwater at this point it doesn't bother you because you can breathe with the pearl in your mouth but essentially you're you're holding yourself underwater yep yeah, might as well there is a uh, a shift in the handle as you feel it starting to slacken indicating that the the water has almost reached the level where the door might be able to open but it's the wrong door <laughs> Um, I'll just hold on to it. Okay. Uh, Gitano starts looking around the room, trying to figure out what this space might be different, or how the space might be different. Uh, he looks up at the uh, the uh, sphincter, actually. I can get Joan out of here. She'll get stung up a little bit, but if I go first, I should be able to push whatever stingweed out of the way. Looking. If you feel confident in that. And he kind of gives you a loft, uh, uh, lopsided smile. Ah, well, I think it'll work. Is that the same thing as confidence? Good enough. Uh, once I've gotten her up to the surface, uh, I'll be back. Okay. Joan kind of looks at the, the water, looks at uh, the rope, looks at Gatano, looks at Annie. She doesn't seem to have a lot of, of, of thoughts right now other than panic as the water starts to uh, go up above her stomach. She's a little shorter, but up above her stomach uh, and start to be about uh, about chest level. Gaetano uh, definitely uh, slides the, uh, the uh, uh, sword uh, into his belt, grabs onto the, uh, the chamber pot. Words. Words are really hard today. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, work before on. noon or just like no <laughs> yeah we do this every single time uh grabs the chamber pot holds it up uh reaches out a hand towards uh towards joan who looks to annie for reassurance does joan, does annie give her reassurance okay uh and then uh, uh, uh gaetano pulls her close to him all right kid this is probably gonna hurt a bit but just relax and we'll be at the surface before you know it she kind of whimpers a little bit, and then uh, he wraps his arm around her, uh, waiting for the water to get high enough because he can't reach the ceiling yet. The room hasn't filled with with uh, water enough. So he's kind of having to, to bob and hang there, waiting for the water. It's going to be close, but I'm 90% I'm, I'm sure this is likely to work. We we'll switch back to the other room. <clears throat> hmm. Uh, Silas is going to think at the wrapped up person's head uh, and uh, say, um, relax, I'll get you out of here. Okay, make a persuasion roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give you a disadvantage, but you suspect that it's going to be difficult to convince them of this. No. Wow. Oh, so this is on fire today. Yeah. Um, Dicebot is, is loving you. <laughs> there's enough cleared away from the eye now that you can make out a sort of light blue skin, uh, humanoid shape, but you can't really make out much detail. Uh, Could it be a a, a a merfolk or a triton? 
the Does skin looks the... smooth, so it's unlikely that it's that it's okay. uh, merfolk who usually have a bit more of a scaly skin, or triton who uh, have uh, very segmented skin. Uh, best you can tell, humanoid, probably elf with uh, light blue skin. Uh, oh, okay. Um, and it, it <laughs> there is sort of a response, not expecting to be able to speak telepath telepathically. The response is, "Get me the hell out of here, ditches." Uh, and oh lord <laughs> from behind you oxia uh just sort of hisses a little bit um dismissively that one tastes bad not worth much i leave that to my other pets hmm uh silas will stand up again turn around um while he's thinking where are you guys <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that far ahead of you. Um, I have to draw this out. Uh, let me let me commune. This is gonna be a performance. Yours. I would not want to agree to something without the mother's permission. And again, there's sort of that shaking or that that side to side bobbing, which you've taken to mean as a as a nodding. Of course, um, I have not seen the Zagling speak to Zagwatha. I would witness this. He's going to. Uh, this is going to take some working. Uh, so he's going to uh, use. Uh, Misty visions to create a large image of Mother Hydra. Um, oh, I don't know. Like, maybe over here. Okay. Um, I wish I had a, a, a an icon for that ready. That would have been smart. Yeah. Eh. Um, and then uh he's going to patiently wait and nod and uh he will uh he will have the uh he'll have the mouth move uh and then uh respond with uh okay, he'll respond uh, in abyssal with, uh, yes, mother, I am here. Okay. Uh, on the far side of the room, when this image appears, the other one, uh, the large one tenses a bit, raises the, uh, the, tri the trident that it's holding and kind of seems at the ready, but doesn't make an attack. Uh, opposite to that, Oxia kind of moves and almost circles a little bit around it. Does she seem like she recognizes or understands the words that I'm saying? Uh, you take from her intense look at the thing and, and her eyes opening wider and wider, kind of like not in shock, but more in absolute fascination. Um, and the, the head kind of bobbing as she moves. And as you speak, the head bobs again, and you're pretty sure that she might have understood that. You can make okay. an insight check to make it a little more clear. Sure. Wish I had much for insight, but wow! Yeah. Wow! Bot still loves you. Mm. Uh, absolutely, she definitely knew what you were saying. Okay, uh, I'm not having Mother Hydra speak. Uh, just. Basically, as though he's hearing it in his head, he'll nod and whatnot. Acting! Um, uh, I say, yes, they have the Star Stone. Uh, they have some uh, elves as well. Uh, at which point Mother Hydra will look dismissive. Who cares about elves? Um, 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, then he'll say, uh, yes, they uh, have offered an alliance if we can uh, assist them in their attack against the town. Uh, and to basically, him. he's going to have a one-sided conversation. He's going to try and drag things out a bit as he really hopes that his friends show up soon. Um, and he'll probably... Uh, he'll make it look like Mother Hydra is asking questions that he'll then uh, repeat to... Uh, uh, I don't remember her name, but the lady in charge. Oxy. Uh, about um, will my people remain safe? Uh, what parts in your assault will we be? There are guards in the town and we are not numerous. Um, okay. How long do we have to prepare? That sort of thing. As you weave this illusion, and Oxia kind of looking at it, looking f it for it to, uh, to respond, watching and kind of examining each of these these moments of it, uh, and this is the the figure, or it looks like the figure that we described earlier, the one that Silas had yeah. used uh, and presented, which is a, a, a vaguely feminine features, um, appears to be taller than it is. There's some weird sort of perspective. Um, yeah, shifting that goes on where it seems like she could yeah, be... a little shorter than the room, but uh, um, her head there might is... be parts of the illusion that show stuff sort of around her that might imply a larger size. Her head is kind of some vaguely serpentine, somewhere between the sea devils and humanoid. Um, a tall, statuesque figure. Her head is uh, from from the sort of midpoint of the head backward is just a writhing mass of large snakes a couple of which are massively large, like large tentacles that kind of shift and move around. Uh, and her body is strangely almost triangular shape. Uh, it seems to appear to be clothing, but at the same time appears to be somewhat organic. And as you're weaving this illusion and asking these questions, something happens. You realize, Silas, that you are no longer in control of the illusion. It seems to be moving on its own. The two long, uh, long I snake like might happen. Two I'm long, gonna remain calm. Long <laughs> snake like arms are kind of uh, moving independently, watching one, watching you, the other one kind of mirroring Oxia's own motions. Um, the snakes writhe as if they are floating in the water. Um, and you. And if Checks the uh, the uh, not Patreon uh, Pinterest page. I just updated it with a picture. Uh, and you you hear responses to your questions, but they aren't responses in words so much as forces, uh, almost as though entire thoughts are rolling over you. Um, and the yeah, I'm gonna stop faking answers at this point. <laughs> as the 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 creature that stands before you, this image of this creature that stands before you, makes voice. Beneath me are these. And that comes out as a psychic pulse as much as anything else. Oxia steps back a step, uh, looking at the creature and kind of looking over at you. And you realize that while she had been somewhat intent and in understanding and believing of you before, now she seems almost incredulous as this can't be as what it must be. Uh, what, were, what was the, let's run through some of the questions that you had ha had asked. Uh, I'd asked um, basically if, if my people would be safe in this attack um how long do we have to prepare for the attack? Uh, what is our part, uh, or what would be our part in the plan? Uh, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and actually, the others in the other room are also hearing the other half of this conversation that sort of rumbles and rolls through the water. 
um, as you hear this strange voice uh, speak, okay. one that, that that fills you with some some dread. Weirdly enough, um, you had heard Oxius speak, I believe, before. I'm not sure if anyone knew more than Silas did, but I think everybody had heard a little bit. Silas is the only one that's met her. Okay. The only one that's met her, but I think earlier she'd mentioned Zagling, and that's where this began. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, in his head, yeah. But this strange one-sided conversation starts coming through to you. Um, Something's going on. We need to get back there. All that is water will belong to me. Down will go this marina. Down will go this oxia. And it kind of gestures over at where the inky blackness is. And there's a weird sort of parting of the inky blackness, almost like um, if you have a, uh, a fan which is blowing on a curtain and it pushes the curtain aside and ripples and waves, revealing just a slight bit of the stone within. I wish this stone. And then the main head turns to you, Silas. Bring it to me. Meanwhile, the water now has reached... What the shit is that? ...about shoulder level. Gaetano is getting ready with Joan, reaching upward kind of putting his hand now on the edge of the the sphincter to try to grab and pull outward. Uh, There's sort of in uh, weirdly bubbling now as instead of a steady rush of air going out, it kind of bubbles and then water pours in and then it bubbles again. Joan kind of shivers in his grasp. That doesn't sound good, kid. Good luck. And Gaetano pushes off and moves upward through, dragging joan with him he swings he swims seem seemingly extraordinarily powerfully and even though there's still a foot or so gap between the ceiling and uh and uh and him or the ceiling rather in the water uh you see him thrust with very powerful strokes of his feet and move up inward and soon gets caught in the upper rushing air uh and is moved leaving now just you attached to the wall, still having enough air to breathe, not having yet to use the uh, the container that you've made of air. Um, for you, Medric, it's about shoulder length, or shoulder, uh, what well, would be if you were standing. You're holding on to the, the handle still, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. But both of you um... have heard that strange voice roll over you. You've got no context for it other than this sense of power. And it was just all encompassing. There was no direction to it, right? It was, yeah, exactly. the The closest you can imagine it is if you've heard, if you've been in an ocean, and somewhere while you're underwater, someone slaps a paddle on the surface. There's a mm-hmm. vague directionality, but it does seem to come from everywhere. Um. Well, there's not much I can do if we can't get the door open. Yeah. Um, I do think we should go back, and I would say that. Um, and I'm going to hold on to both pythons. Okay. So you still got the rope tied up there as well, kind of wrapped around your stomach. Yep. You can, you can see now, though, that the, the rope is, while it seemed to be taut, as you start to float up and your weight is no longer straight, straight on the rope, um, it's going to slip off the pythons if you're not careful. Yeah, so I'm going to, like, make sure I'm holding on. Tight grip. Um, Because, yeah, if we can't get this door open to get back, Mm -hmm. there's not much we can do. As you're going to yell this out, you're hearing it underwater, Medric, at this point, as you're still kind of leaning down to hold on to the handle. It's a little bit vague, but I'm going to I'm going to be generous and say that you can actually understand what she says. Yeah. Uh, perhaps she even kind of yells it underwater, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. You can feel um, the... I do like bump my head underwater a few times to like get back used to that cuz you were too get used, used to, to holding my breath. Too used to breathing underwater. Yeah. Uh Medric, you can feel the door starting to slacken a little bit. And then at one point, there's this jerking feeling 
as though someone is trying to open the door from the other side. Uh-oh. <laughs> then I'll, I'll keep it closed. <laughs> All right. Um... Unless... Oh. Yeah, I'll keep it closed. Okay. So how long am I expecting to be able, like, based on our experiences in these rooms in the past, like, how how long roughly is it going to take until we can open the other door? I mean, the the problem is this door, this room will have to probably refill with air if that's going to be the case. And that will take a couple of minutes. Shit. All right. You do know that as soon as the the room fills up and the sphincter closes, the air rush from the plants that are here will fill it up again. And, and you can actually see some of the bubbles coming from the plants already. They're not fast yep. enough to overcome the release when the sphincter opens, but um, with, with it closed, they can, within a few minutes, fill the room again. Yeah. Uh, holding your breath is one plus your con modifier, right? I actually have the drowning rule here for some yeah. reason. Yeah, a number of minutes equal to one plus your con mod or con mod minimum of thirty seconds. So if you have a less than or a zero or a negative con mod, it's not going to be zero minutes. Cool. And so I can hold my breath two minutes. And then you start choking. Yep. Then we talk about survival. Yeah, you have the chamber pot right into right? Plus whatever the pot gives me. So. Yeah. Okay, um, Medric, what are you doing? Holding on, I guess. There's nothing else I can do. Okay. There is a tug at the door, and you can feel the doors giving way. Make a... I guess it would be athletics in this case. Uh, actually, sorry, it's acrobatics, because you can't... God damn. <laughs> you're not standing on the ground. You don't have your weight to give you that, so you have to kind of brace yourself. Ow. As you feel... It's not like you. As you feel the door kind of move upward, it moves about a two, about a foot and a half at this point, uh, and so it's kind of now kind of at mid, uh, mid, or about uh, almost hip height for you, uh, more than a foot and a half, I guess that case, uh, and it is starting to open. You're slowing it down, but you aren't keeping it from from opening. What are you going to do? I'm just going to release it and grab the warhammer. <laughs> All right. You release the the, uh, the door, and in front of back you, up a little bit too, like uh, sure. You stumble, stumble back. So a I got some bit. swinging, and you see another one of those uh, sea devils standing there, and kind of pulls the door open. That door is now open, and we will go back. Uh, we'll go into initiative mode after another little interlude with Silas. I'll be right back. Um. Silas will uh, uh, drop down to one knee with like his his arms out uh, before Mother Hydra and say, "Please, Mother, uh, leave them their lives. They could be useful allies." Um, and Oxia uh, turns from you to it. Uh, yes, yes. We can work together to remove the scourge from land and off of our waters. We wish to work together. You do not want us as enemies. We will prevent your return. Um, the figure kind of looks back and forth. Looks at, at you, Silas. Stand, child. Immediately stands. Let me hear your offer, she says to Oxia, who steps back another step, almost out of the under the glare of the of the image that's before her. On the other side of her, stepping forward, is the four limbed. Um, larger one, who looks now intent on you and does have his trident raised. It utters something I in a language. do my best to ignore him. It, it, utter, it utters something in a language you don't recognize, but their language. Uh, it seems angry and 
definitely directed indirectly, if you will, towards you. You're the you're the subject, if not the the or the object rather than the subject. Um, Oxia hisses at him. Zaguata, we will leave your servant alive and give him one of the boons, but we need the other. Either strength from Aroka or power from stone. And it seems as though the figure consider this for a second. And we will fight side by side in raids, taking town, taking ships, and we will help your return. It seems to be considering this. Let's roll initiative for the other group. Fine, fine. All right, I need initiative counter. Where's that thing? There it is. Just one second, I need to clear it. All right. That was a nat 20 for initiative, so 28. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Wow. Okay. Where is initiative? Be alert, PDO. Just need to find my stupid little... Oh, wow. I actually rolled decent. Holy crap. Yeah. Well, you guys were prepared for this in a way, sort of. I mean, not prepared so much as, oh, crap, it's happening. Yeah. Annie, anyway, we got company. Uh, let's see. Oh, where's my... Okay. Here we go. So you got a 28, did you say? Oh, my good lord. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about a tie in that particular case. <laughs> uh, let's see. This guy is going to have that for initiative. And this guy is going to have that for initiative. I'm figuring out all the buttons, and they go all at the same time. That's just not right. All right. Uh, whoops, I need to sort. At least we don't go at the same time as them this time. That's Because that was true. funny. That was embarrassing. <laughs> Everybody was 11 and 12, so it was great. <laughs> okay. Uh, Annie, you are currently oh. pinioned up. You have the uh, the thing up above your head. Um, as you feel the water shift um, and the door open, uh, you can feel kind of the flow of the water in your direction. Uh, Medric yeah. is back, back, back to, away from the door. Probably said something like, "Oh shit, here they come." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm guessing, Medric. Yeah, I just said we have company. <laughs> uh, and you've also drawn your the drawn the the Sea Devil Warhammer, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so them opening the door that filled the rest of the room with water, right? Uh, it continues to, yes. Yeah. So now you have the, the little pot to breathe from, or you can hold your breath. Yep. Yeah. Um, is the sphincter closed now that the room is filled, or yes, did it, it like fill it all the way? It is? It has closed, or it is closing in, in a second or two it closes. Okay. Um, so I... I'm going to take a breath, push my pot over to the side so that it's not in front of the hole. Okay. Um, so that hopefully it just stays there. Okay. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, and I'm going to um, move. I'm going to swim over here. And uh, actually here. And I will hold... Oh, and my computer didn't completely freeze. Yo, oh, yeah, that's you great. Moved that. that moved on its own. Magic. That's great. Uh, for now, who knows? Who knows what computer will decide to do? <laughs> um, so I have two minutes on, on the thing, and I will hold a rapier attack. Okay. From that angle, you can actually see see that the doorway is filled with one of these sea sil devils. Looks like it's ready to come in. Medric, and he moves over beside you. You can see her cheeks are are full of air. Right. I'm also just like casually keeping an eye on my on my thing, hoping it doesn't like flow out of the hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing to keep in mind is with the room now filled with water, unless you have a mm -hmm. swim speed, you're moving at half speed. Yep. And if you have a weapon not designed to be used underwater, which actually you both do, 
but it would be disadvantage, nope. but you're fine. It's a piercing weapon. Uh, a rapier doesn't have disadvantage. Yep, and also the the this particular Warhammer does not because it's designed to be used underwater. Yep. Medric. All right, I will. Underwater combat. <laughs> Move up to it. All right. You can see that another one is standing right behind it and kind of trying to peer around the the one in front. And the one in front is is um, kind of had braced its feet to move the door up, so it actually is touching the bottom of the ground of the floor. It doesn't have so to it's standing it nice and still. Yep. Great. Theoretically still. Oh my god! Not quite that still, Forget however. This. As you swing the the, the hammer and. The, the space is a little bit awkward, so as you swing the hammer, it kind of hits against and scrapes along the the uh, the wall beside you, and it kind of ends up going short when it comes closer to it. Okay, that's my turn. <laughs> okay. As you uh, make an impressive opening display, and it goes, huh? Uh, let's and I'll tell it to get out. <laughs> uh... It is going to try to grapple you as it sort of lurches forward and tries to wrap its uh, its arms around you. Ooh. That is an opposed uh, athletics or acrobatics check on your okay. part. Oh. Wait, that. Ah, oh, man. Close. Uh, if only you'd had advantage. That is something yep. we always want to say. Uh, as it uh, grapples onto you and it wraps its arms uh, around you, you find yourself kind of being bowled over as it kicks with its powerful feet and moves the two of you uh, back in, almost uh, running into uh, Annie at the time. As it kind of shoved you back. All right. Uh, so are we like on the same square? Kind uh, of? Uh, actually, it can move right through because it can actually it does actually have a swim speed. Um, so it will shove. Oh wait, no, so it's, it's half. Never mind. Oh, actually, no. Sorry, my apologies. I keep doing the, the math wrong. Uh, Annie, please make a dexterity saving throw. Cool, cool. Uh, probably not. <laughs> Wasn't Annie holding an attack though? Uh, yes, but first she's going to get bowled over by the two of you. Is she is it basically just pushing the thing in? That is a 10. 10? No, no, you're, no, you're colliding with it. All it really is going to mean is that you get knocked back a little bit as the sea devil, with Medric in hand, just sort of swims, moving as far into the room as it can and kind of bowls into Annie at the same time, knocking you back a little bit. Cool, um, cool. Uh, you, you lose one unit of air as you're surprised and the air is knocked out of you. So of your one minute, it's basically 10 rounds. You've now lost one additional round. I have two minutes. Two minutes? Well, there you go. You probably it's, for constitution. it's probably not going to be a, a big issue, but uh, if you get hit like that, or if there's other reasons why you might exert yourself, you may end up having uh, less air than you thought. That was its whole thing. Behind it, swimming in, is another one of these creatures uh, who reaches back and pulls down the door, closing the room. Uh, Annie. I mean, you would have been able to get your attack off, but it would have been on Medric. Yep. Oh, probably sorry, it was the first spin down because I don't use them often. And I have this <laughs> giant one. <laughs> um, so that brings me down to 18. And uh, can I move to here? You certainly can. I can move. Uh, would I be able to attack him from there? Yes, yes. He is holding cool. on to Medric, so a critical failure might be bad. Okay. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to swing at it. Okay. Give her. Uh, that's a natural 17. That is a hit. Um. So, and snick attack because Medric is still beside him. Yep. Although he's grappled at the moment, but he's not in, he's not restrained, so. Yep. 
that D8 is wonderful. Nice. I <laughs> think I've rolled an eight three out of the four times I've rolled it so far. Nice. Eight, nine. With the keeper. 13. Is damage. That the, is that the total? Uh, plus three, so 16. 16. Holy moly. Oof. As you, uh, you kind of swim deftly off to the side. And Medric still kind of wrapped up in this the powerful arms of this creature. Um, you kind of snake the rapier in, watching as uh, Medric is twisting and turning, trying to get out of this uh, creature's grasp. And you just snake the rapier right in and kind of catch it where you assume its ribs are. I mean, they may or may not have ribs in the same place as you do, but you do feel satisfaction as the, uh, the uh, rapier presses in deeper, about a couple of inches deep, and you can see as you pull it out a, a greenish black blood flow. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, and I am going to disengage and move. So that was one. I can move two more squares. So I'll move there. Okay. And that is me. Medric. All right, I will escape its grapple. You will attempt to escape its grapple. Yep. It's just an athletic roll. Yep. Nice. Oh, that was the bad guy. No, <laughs> right. As you, <clears throat> as you twist and turn, you feel yourself at a loss because its swimming ability gives it a natural buoyancy that's able to use to keep you from twisting out of its grasp. Okay, then in that case, I will grapple it back. It's like... <laughs> Well, that was, it's your action to try to break a grapple. Okay. And your move is taken up. You do have a bonus if you have a bonus action. I don't. Okay. Uh, like my normal bonus action would be a spiritual weapon, but I'm out of level two spell slots. It's like, ah, crap. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it still has you there. Um, it will once again shove at you. Basically trying to pin you against the wall back here. Um, that's just its movement. Doesn't have to grapple again. It will try to, uh, uh, with it, its hands kind of grip wrapped around you, uh, you do feel as it turns its hands inward and tries to to uh, to shove its claws into your back. Does a seat, uh, seventeen hit? Oh yeah. <laughs> As you feel the claws uh, stick inward and something slimy seems to move along the edge of the claws and it burns as the claws come back out. So four slashing, four acid damage. Ouch. Uh, and then it will try to bite you on the shoulder. Fifteen? Yep. Uh, as it uh, kind of uh, chomps down, you can see its mouth unhinge in a way that is... You know, disturbing normally, but when it's this close, even more disturbing. There's the smell also of, of, uh, of sort of rotting fish that comes out at the same time, and it clamps down on your shoulder, uh, causing you to wince considerably for piercing to acid damage. So six. So six in total, yes. Uh, the other one. That's its turn. The other one is going to swim inward. Let's see. Five, ten, fifteen looking to corner Annie. Uh, that one. Uh, that one has a spear, so it's going to try to use its spear. First of all, trying to pin you against the wall. Unfortunately, it clatters against the wall. You've been kind of carefully swimming. You saw it easily coming, and with just a, a little bit of a, of, a, of a twist of one foot, you easily uh, uh, move out of uh, its way. Uh, it snarls and then lunges for a bite. Ooh, that one might hit. Uh, 19? Yes. Uh, as it lunges forward and catches your, your uh, left forearm in its massive teeth. And you can feel the, 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 the large triangular teeth kind of piercing into your flesh. And it, it shakes your, uh, your arm like a, uh, a dog with a rag doll back and forth, throwing you a little off balance. You take five piercing and three acid. Uh, now there's blood, blood in the water. Uh, and we're going to go back to the other scene for a moment, as both of you are having a thrashing right now. 
Meanwhile, Silas, you feel as though um, Mother Hydra has made uh, a decision. Um, looking at you, hmm, you get a sense that's not there in the visual, but you get a sense of sort of psychic connection, which is concern, uh, which is um, fear, but not in the way of being afraid of something, but afraid of something not happening. Um, there's almost a, a weird sense of warmth. And you, you realize it's not entirely unlike the way your mother and father look at you, with not a sense of, this is my child, so much as, this is my hope. And it turns back to the other two. We will take one of the two and make your bargain. Oxia looks, if that can be said of this kind of creature, pleased. Which one? And it look, Oxia kind of looks between uh, the figure in front of you and you. And you get the sense, Silas, that you have to make the choice if you're going to choose. <laughs> Moral dilemmas. Oh, I know what he's going to pick. I just have to figure out a way to, to uh, say it. All right, do you need time to do that? I can I can uh, switch to the other scene. Yep. Okay, I'll give you some time to think about what you're going to sacrifice. Meanwhile, Annie, the sea devil just chewed up your arm. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of that. Um so I'm a I'm a swing my rapier at it. Or poke it with the rapier, really. Poke it. Probably not with a seven. Seven, unfortunately, it kind of bounces off its natural hide. Uh, it, you're a little bit thrown off by the, the gaping wound in your arm. And as your own blood starts to fill the space between the two of you, there is one thing you start to notice, though. There's about yeah. a foot from the ceiling now of where the air has, has resumed. Ooh. Um, how... Far, would I be leaving its range if I went up to the air? No. Cool. I will do that. Okay. So you take kind of uh, take take your poke in, and then I kind of imagine you kind of swooshing back and pushing backward to to breach the top of the water and gather a full breath of air. <gasps> and that's where where I'll stay. Okay. Medric, the Water around both of you is now cloudy with the blood of this particular thing. Uh, its eyes are uh, angered and weirdly afraid. It continues to bite away at you, but you think it's not doing well. All right. Um, yeah, there is enough air. Well, you don't have to worry about air. Yeah. No, but I'm just wondering, like, if I were to uh, smash one of those, like, M how do you, like, smash one of the amphoras after lighting it on fire on the ceiling, like, if that would explode on it? It's a little bit awkward to basically do that. Um, you you might be able to. It would probably create some fire on the ceiling. But yeah. the ceiling is about eight feet up. and. Oh, okay not really all that close to where it is at the moment. All right, then I will attempt to break its grapple again. Okay. Athletics. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> this is like my main skill. <laughs> you, you kind of, you feel the, 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 the wall behind you kind of uh, pushing in on your back as the sort of, there's some jagged elements of the stone there, perhaps where something had gone wrong before and it's just swimming with all of its might kicking its its uh its finned feet and just pressing you deeper and deeper into the wall 
Uh, that's your action. If you have a bonus, you can use it or, uh, well, move is out at the moment. That uh, Zorn Guardian orb, did I bring that? Somebody did. I don't know which one of you. You're the one that has it, so. Can that be activated as a bonus action? It takes an action. Damn it, okay. So I have no bonus. Okay. It continues to press in on you. Now, feeling like it's finally gotten you, it actually releases the grapple, which you think might be good until it goes in with the double claws once more, this time trying to rake across your stomach. Damn. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, as it, uh, its claws kind of kind of sink in, and at this moment you're going, I still kind of wish I had my armor but it probably yep. would have still found the little bits and pieces around my armor to jam its sharp, sharp claws into. And as it pulls its fingers back, your blood comes pouring into the into the area. Uh, that's a total of seven damage, two of which is acid. Uh, and then... Hmm. You, you see its, its head kind of move in a weird sort of fashion. And then you sort of realize as it proceeds to lunge in for another bite that it's kind of filtering the the water specifically that has your blood in it uh, as it uh, as it uh, uh, swims in. It's almost like it's tasting the water. Damn. Jesus. Uh, four piercing, one acid damage as it uh, lurches forward, this time catching you Weirdly, almost where it had raked before. Again, almost as though it is trying to drink the blood as you die. Uh, and it j jams its jaw around your, your center point. Again, its jaw unflexing or un unhinging in a way you would not have expected. Uh, the other one. You dive up towards the air. Hmm. Uh, it, it is going to try to grapple you. Annie. This is fine. As it sees you kind of desperately reaching for the air, and it will grab a, at you. Ooh, okay. Athletics or acrobatics, whichever you feel more comfortable with. In this case, it doesn't, doesn't matter thematically. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, you feel it, its powerful arms, actually not that powerful, but powerful enough, uh, its arms kind of reach around you, one arm just sort of around your back, the other one still holding the spear, kind of pulling and, and uh, grabbing onto your body as it drags you down into the water. Uh, let's see, that's its round. Are you ready to, uh, to go back, uh, Silas, or do you need more time? No, I'm fine. Okay. I'm just making it up as I go along. All right. <laughs> we will pause for the moment and go back to the other tense situation. Uh, the question hangs in the air. The uh, large creature beside Oxia uh, seems to be gauging the two of you, you and the projection, uh, trying to decide which one to attack. Oxia is curious as to your response as well. And you can see a thin... A uh, snake-like tongue kind of jar, jot out of her mouth and basically lick her lips as if it's eager to get anything out of this. Um, Silas will uh, aim a pointed uh, I wouldn't even consider that if I were you uh, at the guy with the trident uh, and then say Mother I have an idea. We'll take the elf. No. Um, the... And he looks over. We'll take that one too. You're not using it. Uh, the image, um, not uh, with much emotion, just sort of nods its head, and the image vanishes. Um, Oxia. Um, cocks her head looks over at the uh, still unconscious form of Harriet in the cage 
and you get the sense that there's almost a little bit of disappointment. The 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 lips are licked once more, and you kind of get the intent, the idea that she was kind of looking forward to that little victory meal. Mm -hmm. uh, good little snack, yeah. Um, but uh, um, Oxia's head kind of uh, nods. We are at an accord. We will help, and you will take this morsel away. That other one is tasteless. And she barks something at the other creature who stands up, uh, kind of looks between the, all of you, looks at the now vanished form of, um, of uh, Zagwatha. Uh, and after a little bit of talk back, you get the impression that the power between the two of these is not settled. Uh, that they could either one be consider themselves in charge, but after a moment's argument, uh, the larger one walks over to the cage uh, and uh, produces a key from a, 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 a ring on its belt. And you hear the rusty cage unlocking. Uh, while he's doing that, Silas again is going to think a thought at the wrapped up body and say, say uh i'm taking you with me uh just don't say anything and the the response now maybe a little bit more used to the idea of speaking in its mind yes yes take away to which you can't stand much longer need to go to land place as uh the creature comes back uh sort of basically dragging Harriet. She's still unconscious. Uh, it grabs her grabs her arms and kind of drags her over with minimal effort with two of its arms on this left-hand side. It sets it down before you. Meanwhile, in the other cave. Will? Yeah. <laughs> um, pokey pokey. All right. As this one has you grabs, grabbed around the stomach you stab downward with the rapier. Well, that's a natural 19, so 24. That is definitely a hit. Uh, no sneak attack in this particular case, but stabbing yeah. attack is probably sufficient. Uh, that is 4, 5, 6, 7. All right. Forgot what 4 plus 3 is. <laughs> I was going to say 5, and I'm like, that's wrong. <laughs> Four plus a bit. That must be five. As you stab yes. uh, downward, uh, desperately trying to, probably inverting the, the rapier so you can kind of stab downward with both hands, the, the, the blade or the, the, the thin point of the rapier stabbing in towards the back of its spine, and it kind of straightens up uh, and, and uh, uh, angrily uh, howls at you, uh, holding on for the moment, although perhaps regretting its decision, as this particular yep. fish bites back. Yup. Um, you see, whoever and, the Medric is not looking good. I'm aware. Um, but as a uh, not magic person, there's not much I can do. Um, my head is still out of the water, right? Uh, no, it, it dragged you down under the water. It me down. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, there's not really much I can do to help him, like, to distract the, sea, the other sea devil. That's true. Um, actually, uh, I'm going to try to, like, splash my arms around to, like, push my blood towards the other sea devil to try to get its attention that way. Okay. Uh, that's an interesting thought. Uh, taste your blood over here, I guess. Uh, yeah. Let's make that a, um, a sleight of hand roll. How about that? Let's see if you can cool. waft your blood over in that direction. How how much can I flail? That's a natural <laughs> 18, so okay. 20, uh, 23. So you probably reach over, and there's a little bit of your your uh, your uh, your cloak 
which has got some a, a good amount of your blood in it now and kind of tear off a small piece and, and whip it off in that direction, which kind of floats a little bit, catching the sense of the, the thrashing that both you and Medrick are doing. Weirdly, some sense of the of the of the water and the movement of it. You get it just the right way. Where... It would be like part of my shirt. OK, and as part of your shirt kind of wa wafts over to it. Uh, and you see with some satisfaction the creature uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of hesitate for a moment. We'll call it that. Medric. Perfect. The creature in front of you has, head action. <laughs> has head hesitated for a moment. It is no longer grappling onto you, seemingly satisfied um, with the amount of damage it's already done and the, and the pinioning it's already done. What do you do? Oh, my turn. Yep. I'll close my eyes and focus and then Channel Divinity, boom. Ooh. So everybody or every hostile creature takes 2d6 plus cleric level radiant damage. Unless they make the con save, in which case it's half. And what the, what's the range of that? I don't think 30 it's an feet. Issue. Yeah, it's not an issue. All right, uh, con saves, eh? Let's see what that looks like. Here is the big guy attached to you. No. Uh, the big guy attached to... Uh, oh, look at that. Oh. Uh, as it sort of finds a way to twist and turn so that Annie would have taken the brunt but is not the target of it anyway. What is the damage? Damage is... Oh, that, that was a damage, 12. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. I can't say my uh, con is 13, I believe. This happens every time. I always remember. Yeah, three doesn't it would be save a... from 13 and a nat 20 saves. Yeah. <laughs> the one saves, the other one does not. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Okay. So, describe this flash of light which utter, which destroys or kills the creature in front of you. Oh, uh, shit. It starts from like a... Yeah, it'll start like from Medric's eyes and just like... Words are, are not coming to me either today. <laughs> okay. So I kind of imagine you, eyes, like, you pulling back a little bit. Into its soul and like, boom. A little bit of the, the penance stare from Ghost Rider and inspiration here. Yeah. As the, as the light kind of builds up and flutters and flickers, kind of like fire that's building up around you. A little bit of a nimbus and then this bright, massive light uh, as uh, you, you view with the power of Ignis. Uh, and it, it's uh, its face, somewhat distracted by this new smell of, of fresh blood, uh, snaps back to you. And then it's, its eyes go wide and then go gray and ashen and white as it grips and, and howls at its pain. Uh, and then is uh, 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 torn from within. You can see little shafts of light running from your eyes and piercing out its back. And then it is floating there in front of you. Uh, you <laughs> swing your you swing your gaze around at all those who oppose you, uh, and uh, catch the other sea devil in in your, uh, your view. But it seems to be aware of what happened to the other one, and maneuvers so that its eyes are are, are shielded by Annie. But nonetheless, the, where the rays touch its uh, scaly hide, they boil and bristle under the pain. Uh, that guy, he's dead. And um, no longer needs to be part of the initiative. Good job. Nice, nice. Uh, he is dead and dead. He is deader than dead. That was not close. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, that was Medric's turn. That was your that was your action. You still technically have a move and a bonus. I will stay right here. <laughs> that's that's fair. And he's got the other guy. <laughs> All right. Although Annie's currently being dragged underwater by the other guy, but uh, let's see, what is the other guy going to do? Hmm. How smart is he? Eh, I'll give him an int, int roll. Okay, he's smarter than that then. Um, what he is going to do? He releases Annie and tries to scrabble at the sphincter. Uh, he what? See. He cut out a little bit. 
he, he releases Annie, uh, seemingly somewhat surprised by this and seeing his colleague uh, somewhat under the water, you might say, uh, then proceeds to try to, to uh, float up towards the sphincter. Uh, it is now two feet of open air between it and the between the the ceiling and it, um, so it can still reach it, but it's now scrabbling away at it. Uh, it seems to understand how they work more than you guys did. It, it seems like it's it's trying to force it to open. Uh, it will be leaving your space, Annie, uh, just because it was going to be floating upward. So you can cool, make cool, an cool. attack of opportunity. I will. I will do so. It is not within Medric's range, though, so you don't get the sneak attack. Uh, so, 17, 22. 22 is definitely a hit. This one die is, like, rolling really good this week. Yeah. It learned its lesson from being in jail all last session. <laughs> uh, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9. 9. 9. Okay. Uh, as it scrabbles desperately up, sort of jamming the spear in and trying to get the spear point in the center of this and, and raking its claws around the outside, you can see the, the, the strange uh, muscle-like uh, uh, creature that, that is these, these, these sphincters start to sort of shift and shiver. And it looks like it's just about to get it open when, Annie, from behind, you stab upward with the, the uh, rapier. Catching it on I stab the, it in the butt as it's trying to open the butthole. <laughs> okay, there's my answer. Uh, <laughs> as it proceeds to move upward, and we, we pan the camera to look down at this desperate creature as it's sort of scraping across the surface of the camera, representing this, the, the sphincter. And then suddenly there's this <clears throat> look in its eyes as they go wide, and it kind of starts to twist its face a little bit and distort and <clears throat> cough as a little bit of its greenish, blackish blood flows out of its mouth, and then its eyes kind of squint, and then they kind of have that expression of, really? Uh. And it is dead. Should have kept the door closed. Probably should have. Although they were, came really close to, uh, <laughs> to getting an extra meal today. Yeah. Last meal, as it turns out. All right. You float there. The water starting to slowly descend once more. Harriet has been dragged over to you, Silas, and placed before you like a, an offering. I look over to the other ones and that one. Take him, says Oxia. We will not stop you. How and will we know when your attack is about to happen. Mm. We have ways of making it known underwater. There will be a noise. Can you hear underwater? Sometimes. My, my purpose mostly keeps me on the land. Hmm. Then if you do not hear our early signal of the sound, a sound like smashing of the air, and you get the sense she's trying to describe lightning, maybe? Hmm. A thunderclap. Then there will be a light from the stone. How long until your plan begins? And with this, she kind of turns to the other one and, and barks. Who The other one hasn't stopped sort of watching and eyeing you uh, uh, suspiciously. It barks back, uh, something brief, something quick. And then there seems to be a moment of argument between the two of them before finally uh, Oxia seems to settle the argument. You're not exactly sure what the argument was about. Uh, but the other one quiet for a second, and then slowly nods its head, and then barks something. We will be ready when the sun has gone down tomorrow. When did we come out here? Uh, you came out uh, early the day after, so it still, it still would be morning. 
Okay, so we've got the rest of this day and then another day and then the sun goes down. Okay. Enough time for a long rest, I hope. <laughs> yes. Good. I will need time to make preparations with my people. This will be a glorious endeavor. We will work together and begin a new age. First, the Aroka were banished, and now, now the land dwellers. Soon, the world will be. Uh, he's a, I say, actually, I think, can use the right level of haughtiness. Uh, <laughs> oh well, I'm too tired for that. Uh, <laughs> soon, the world will be ours. It seems to be appropriate to follow that with. <laughs> um, make a uh, a performance or deception. I will give yeah. you the choice. However, there will be different uh, shades to the two. Performance will be basically you're engaged on her side. Deception is you really believe you want this. Uh, uh, same for either of them. So he's going to go with performance. Okay. That's his job. Oh, uh, runs out. <laughs> uh, not advantage on this one, no. Actually, okay. no. Given the circumstances, I will say it is advantage because uh, they 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 literally just got to speak with uh, Zagwatha, and it kind of confirms it. Your nervousness, you you feel like you're trying to come across as, yeah, this yeah. is going to be good. We're going to work together, and and I'm looking forward <laughs> to ruling the world by your side. It comes across maybe as more as, yeah. Uh, we'll, um, we'll work together on that and, um, we'll, uh, it'll be great. It'll be great. And this will be fine. It'll be, this, this is fine. The main mission fails to sure I can roll the world, I guess. This is fine. I look, at them, I, look, I look down at the two, well, is she tied up as well or just unconscious? She's just unconscious. It looks like she's still soaking wet, so they probably just dragged her down here. Not, mm. not dead, but probably half drowned. So, Hmm. I look back, I look at the door that I came in with and say, have you seen any others wandering around? I have associates down here. They may have. Um, My apologies if they have uh, caused any problems. Oxia kind of. I'll need to call these up. Oxia kind of, uh, for, again, nods her head, and, and you see her kind of tilt her head backward as if listening to something. And I give her a bit of a, you know how hard it is to get people to get good help. They are inferior. They have their uses. They are still here, although some have left. Well, that'll have to be good enough. Um, I can lead them here. Uh, thank you. All right. Meanwhile, the water has now <laughs> dropped down to about half filling the room, kind of a little bit below chest level, and it's filling up rapidly again. The two bodies of the sea devils are slowly drifting down with the uh, with the water level, but the water looks pretty awful at this point. Yep, it feels pretty awful too. I'm gonna cure wounds myself because I look like shit. <laughs> All right. Woo! However, as the fire flares up in the open air, you will take the damage from the fire. What? Oh, wait, no, you're curing yourself. Never mind. Yeah, it's for myself. Yeah. Wait, four plus nine. Yeah, okay. So you Addition take a moment to catch your breath as the water drips down. No sign, again, of, uh, of uh, Gaetano and Joan, but it would have taken them a considerable amount of time just to get to the surface. Yeah. The uh, pot you were breathing in, Annie, is slowly 
floating downward with the tide. I grab it. Phone. Just a sec. <laughs> Freaking phone. Phones? Who has those anymore? All right. Uh, Annie, what are you going to do in the meantime? What's your? you have any plans or anything you want to do? Or are you just waiting? Uh, I would like to get my pythons back. Okay. Takes you a moment to kind of pull them out. As you, as you realize that the, uh, the rope, it slipped off almost immediately as soon as it got wet. Yep. But you retrieve your, your pythons? Yep. Okay. okay. We will hopefully not have to pause too long because I actually need <laughs> Medrick here for this particular part of the scene. Uh, in the meantime, uh, hmm, yeah, okay. Uh, in the meantime, Silas, uh, you hear Oxia kind of whistle something. And then you realize that she's th just kind of that sense that you have of of magical energies being being uh, transferred. Uh, I had hang up instead of mute. That's all right. Uh, yeah. I'll return to you in just a second. Uh, I just had to go to the other direction. Uh, as you uh, feel and actually more hear from around you uh, a a rustling Silas. Uh, coming out of the uh, the uh, webbing that's there, uh, and then look down to see hundreds, maybe thousands, of tiny little spiders uh, emerging out of the the uh, webbing, and they all sort of <laughs> march off in the direction towards the door, uh, and then kind of weirdly find a way to go through cracks, kind of splitting apart into dozens of little tiny uh, directions, rivulets of tiny uh, blue and silver spiders around the door and vanish. They will need them. Well, I can tell. I think that to myself. <laughs> the water now has dropped down to about, uh, uh, about knee height in the, uh, in the room. The two of you kind of gather yourself um, out of the wall, Annie, right beside you. Dozens upon dozens of tiny spiders crawl out of tiny little uh, holes, presumably fighting against the tides themselves or the water that's leaving the room as the pressure of the air builds. And they start I to... squeal a very, like, the stereotypical, like, terrified <laughs> spider. spider. <laughs> like terrified preppy girl scream of seeing spiders that anybody here has ever heard. <laughs> I'll turn towards it and it's like, what the hell? Um, as they assemble in front of you into this large cluster, kind of stepping all over each other uh, and, and react weirdly to your squeal, uh, almost like uh, they are multiple little bodies in, in one, one wave of, of water, kind of rippling outward, trying to stay away from the sound of your scream. Uh, but then they proceed to, to crawl over, crawl over the, the body now of the resting uh, sea devil in front of you, Medric. Mm -hmm. Some of them staying there, some of them starting to, to, uh, to crawl within the body and crawl into the wounds. Uh, and even some of them, penetrating and moving through and out some of the other little holes uh, and then uh, moving upward towards the wall they form a, a sort of spider chain uh, moving up to what you recognize as the the four stones that are there the strange controls uh, and they... hammer raised but not like hitting anything yet what's that raising the hammer but i'm not hitting it yet okay <laughs> um... like what the hell is that Say hello to my little friends. <laughs> You're like hundreds of thousands of little friends, yes. They're quite gross. As they sort of swarm upward and they build little structures behind them, so there's a, a half a webbing structure there, uh, they they surround the controls. Uh, and then you you notice that the, uh, the creatures kind of crawl over one rock and then retreat then crawl over another rock and then retreat, and then a third rock, and then a fourth rock. Then there's a pause. And then they repeat that pattern. I'll push the pattern after it. 
or after them. Okay, kind of gingerly reach in, and you notice that they retreat as you get closer and gingerly press the one stone, which moves, and then another, and then another, and then the fourth one. And then there's a ka in the door, similar to what you heard before. The water now has dropped down to just above your ankles. I grab my pot. I'll say to Annie, it's like, I hope Silas is doing better than we are. <laughs> <laughs> and you open, go the door. open the door. It moves fairly easily. A little bit of water rushing into the other room, but as the water rushes in, the swarm kind of follows it along and proceeds to lead you all the way to the other door, repeating that same procedure of building up a little bit of structure and then demonstrating how the door should open. And then Either this is a trap or Silas somehow is controlling the spiders. Yeah, I suppose he does do illusions. <laughs> Spider mage. Spider mage. <laughs> <laughs> As it leads you now down the door you did not take before. Of course you went uh, this way. And proceeding through this one. Following down. To where. You pass through this door. And then finally. As you come through this door. You see. The spiders kind of slink off to the side. And rejoin this massive web. And there you see. Before you. Silas which is a good sight. But then you realize that beside him seems to be some sort of body wrapped up in these webs. The unconscious form of Harriet. The hulking form of a four-armed a four -armed, uh, uh, creature. Larger than what you'd fought before and with this, this massive trident at its side. And the somewhat curious and different form of a female uh, there. Who then uh, kind of whistles a little bit for you silas it's similar to what she had said before probably speaking once again to the swarm uh and then her her lilting or not lilting uh, uh, uh rough uh growly uh, uh reptilian voice speaks in common there your friends have come yeah uh just as they're coming in the door Silas wants to say something into their heads. Okay. Uh, we're okay. Go with it. We can get out of here. Uh, the stone will have to get. We'll have to get later. Trust me. I'll res I'll, res I'll catch myself like, not saying it verbally, but like, the stone is here. I can't really say anything. Okay. Okay. What was that? I, I respond these flow as okay. <laughs> and actually, as so you I, come in, you will have noted that that sort of ball of of rippling darkness that's not far from you. Oh hell, <laughs> Silas, so um, are, are you okay? Uh, oh, I think actually she was saying something. Too. I just I wanted to get that in as soon as they came in, but I think she's. Yep. I think the. I think. Box him. Yeah, I think she was saying something. Yep, she just said it in common time, most mostly to you, but also to them. Uh, I have brought your friends. You will go now. Yes. Uh, I look over at uh, at uh, at my friends and say. Uh, we uh, we will need these elves. Take them back up to the surface. All right. And then I wonder. Hey, wait, I, I, yeah, I, I walk over to them, and then just uh, while I'm out of, uh, damn it, I keep wanting to call her Anixia, but no, that's not it. Oxia. Oxia. Uh, when I'm close enough to them that she can't see me, my face is like. Um, so, go with it, go with it, go with it. Uh, yeah, you get the feeling that uh, Silas is somewhat nervous about the situation, but seems to have reached some sort of strange accord. Okay. Um, 
And do I see the um, stippled or the light that's being darkened? Uh, you don't see it. You see the darkness. Uh, I will allow you to make a, hmm, let's call it a perception check. Perception. Eh. You get a sense that it's nearby, but you don't see it and you can't get direction out of it. However, okay. the last bubbling, roiling, organic bubble of darkness is a pretty good indicator that something is being kept there. So it's yeah. still a reasonable guess, even if you can't feel it. Um, with my 12 strength, do I think I can uh, carry um, Harriet? I think that you could probably drag her. Carry might be a bit uh, optimistic. Yeah, uh, 12 strength can lift about 180 pounds before they're encumbered. Yeah, yeah you could probably, it, it will be slow. For you, I can carry okay. her. And, and Fireman, just out of out out of the room, basically, is what yeah. I'm going for. I mean, you know, 180 pounds soaking wet is literally what you'd be looking at potentially, uh, as she is still quite soggy. So you're going to go over yep. and try to pick up Harriet. Yep. Okay. As you kind of get closer, I feel more confident carrying her than whoever's in the mummy situation, and I'm not I'm not touching. You can actually still see as you kind of walk by, you can still see the the swarming uh, masses of little tiny spiders all around moving back and forth. It is a little bit like uh, the old Silas and Charybdis, though, because you look over to your right and see the hulking form of this four-armed uh, behemoth who's looking at you with... Well, make an insight check. He's looking at you intently. And I want to strangle a lawnmower. It's the other problem with Sunday mornings. <laughs> yeah. Well, it hasn't been a problem so far. We've been lucky, I guess. Not great. Number six. Six? Yeah. There's a couple of thoughts. It's a bit hard to read. Their facial expressions are made up of different things than yours. But judging on the way the eyes are and the teeth, maybe the bit of the way the shoulders are holding that... Uh, that uh, trident you're pretty sure he wants to eat you yep I, I i grab her and i back up back as far as i can to the door okay i'll pick up the spider web guy okay I, he's actually part of the map so i can't move him at the moment but <laughs> yeah i'm just saying like i'm picking him up <laughs> yeah uh it is a little bit weird because the spiders do kind of move mostly out of your way there are quite a few spiders still embedded in the webs that are holding him however and you see this one eye that's been revealed and a spider kind of crawls across the eye and it blinks madly. And you hear this from inside. Oh, he's alive. We'll just tear apart the webbing then. Uh, okay. Uh, it is it is tougher than you expect and it's extraordinarily sticky. So as you're pulling off this webbing, you're getting half of it on yourself. And after a while, it looks as though the two of you were uh, wrestling in silly string. <laughs> But I will uh, uh, look over just with a, 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 a command and say, that can be left till later. Just get him out of here. All right. All right. Get, get it out of here. Um, as you have pulled back some, you do uh, realize it's a, it's a female elf. Um, light blue skin. Uh, desperate look in its eyes. And, and, and as soon as one of the hands is released, it starts to sort of scrabble at itself or herself, I should say. Uh, trying to scrape off the still spiders you can see and the, the webbing which is uh, infused throughout the, the clothing as well. The clothing is ragged and torn, uh, ill-fitting, weirdly enough. It, it looks like the, the shirt is too small and kind of uh, too taut for the body. Uh, and you can see that it doesn't seem to be injured, just lots and lots of tiny little bites. Uh, thank you, thank you, release, thanks, she says kind of desperately, and then sort of clings on to you uh, as uh, as still seems weak, if not actually wounded. Uh, as you proceed towards the door, I'm assuming, are, are you saying anything else before you leave, Silas? Um, I just look over at, uh, at Oxia uh, and say, uh, we will await your signal. 
God. I'm kind of a signature of Riestus, but I don't actually know. <laughs> Good, Zagling. We will feast well soon. Yes. <laughs> uh boy. <laughs> As you all proceed now, how, where are you going from here? I'm thinking back to the butthole, but but <laughs> you know, quite enough pearls for that. Any particular butthole? Are the the rest one we you... came in. That's okay. nearest the rowboat, I guess. Okay. You do know of a few of them because there's the ones, uh, the one where the other group had just been was one of them. Uh, there's also one in the treasure room, and there's the one you came in on. Uh, there's also another one up in the upper, uh, sort of north uh, eastern corner where you first fought the uh, the the pair of well three of the sea devils. Oh, um. I'll mention that actually pick up the money that was there. Yeah, yeah that too. We we grabbed what we could carry each. Okay, yeah. Yeah, a few handfuls each. Yeah. Okay. Um we return to, to taxes. Yeah. Um yeah, I think we should just go back the way we came in, since we That's kind of know that one. That's yeah. maybe a little cleared out. Yeah. Um, okay. As I'm good move, with this. As you move back along the way, the uh, the the elf that Medric is holding kind of is able to walk on her own after a little while. Uh, it seems like she was stiff and maybe paralyzed inside all of that. Um, Harriet, Medric, seems... it would be easier if you carry her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, as you kind of hand Harriet over to Medric, um, she moans slightly but does not yet wake up coughs a little bit along the way as you make your way back to the numerous doors uh, and try to remember which way you went thankfully it seems a lot easier on the way back to remember this um, each of you make a perception check no. oh. sticks that means it is uh, Silas who notices, and, and you can choose whether I mention this or not. As along mm -hmm. the way, you do see every once in a while a cluster of small, small spiders, possibly shadowing your travel along the way. Um, yeah, no, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> uh, That's probably for the best. Actually, we'll probably know where the exit is, though. I mean, actually, uh, uh, I will go over to one of the groups and hold out a hand near one, shaking slightly. Okay. Uh, trying to get one onto my hand. The uh, the cluster tentatively approaches, and then as you kind of lean your hand down, about a dozen of them climb onto your hand and start crawling up your arm. Uh, I look at them, and assuming she's got some sort of notice thing going on, uh, I look over at the uh, the the webbing that's still on. Oh, actually, no, she's mostly moving. She's supposed to get the webbing off, doesn't she? Uh, yes. Okay, never mind then. I just wanted to make sure that the spiders were out of the webbing, but if she's not webbed anymore, then there's probably nothing hiding there. Um, so, uh, never mind. Uh, yeah, just uh, keep on keeping on. I don't tell them anything about it because I don't want anyone spooked suddenly. Okay. Or to like start asking questions <laughs> or throwing Molotov cocktails. Yeah. Um, I will, again, say to their heads, um, we should be quiet. Uh, I think she can see and hear anything that goes on inside here. Uh, just pretend I'm in charge and we can get these two out of here to safety. This ability oh, that... Got it, boss. This ability that Silas has now demonstrated numerous times, it's still a little unnerving to hear his voice directly in your head. That seems like a pretty powerful um, magic trick. Um, as you kind of move backward, Harriet moans and half comes awake, kind of coughing a little bit, um, asking where she is. 
not seemingly aware of, of herself in the immediate, immediate circumstance. I won't say anything because I'm supposed to be aloof right now. So, uh... I'll just tell her we're underwater. How good are you at swimming? Please say good. Uh, very good. Great. Because we need to swim up. All right. I think I can do that. And she kind of steps up, uh, slowly getting up to her feet on her own. She's still somewhat shaky and woozy. And kind of I turn to the other one. And you? Me what? How good are you at swimming? Oh, swimming. Uh, good? Because we have to swim a, a fair bit. Oh, uh, yes, swim good, yeah. Upwards, yes. Just awkward nod. <laughs> <laughs> I have complete faith in this plan. Let's go. All right. You make your way back oh, to that. Silas. Who is this person? <laughs> I have eighteen percent of a plan. <laughs> oh, uh, I am. You have Stella. the diet pills. You don't need a plan. I am Stella, and uh, the blue elf extends her her hand from Sidada. Yeah? yeah, you know it. Do I know Sidada? Uh, make a history check. May I as well? Sure. I'll shake your hand though. I mean, there's no COVID-19 in you make it with advantage? Yeah, no COVID-19 okay. in my world yet. <laughs> I already had a plague in the other version of the world. <laughs> uh, what was that, Annie? 15. 15? Yeah, both of you have heard of Sedata. It's an island in the uh, the, the western uh, Ulvip, or actually eastern Ulvip, which is uh, the, the large... Um, body of water to the western western part of Amasia. It's quite a ways away from here. Never met anybody doing all the way over here. Hmm? What? What are you doing all the way over here? Oh, uh, trade? All right. Yes, trade, yes. Does she, is she hiding something? Make an insight check. <laughs> I I do ask an elven. I'm more fluent in elven. Okay. Um, for you, uh, Medric, um, probably just still trying to get over the fact that they were wrapped up in spider webs and covered with spider yeah. bites and maybe paralyzed for who knows how long. <laughs> uh, what do you do, uh, uh, Annie? Uh, I I ask if it's easier for her to speak in elven. Okay. Um, she looks at you. Let go now. Yes, swim up. Swim okay. In uh, in common. Okay. You make your way back to that uh, room where you first came in. It's several doors deep, but now there doesn't seem to be any opposition. No one, nothing in the way. The water itself is not even filled in in any of these rooms. Uh... How do you want to exit through the last uh, last space? Are you going to try to flood the room and allow it to, or sorry, uh, the area is open? Are you going to try to convince it to open up uh, or, or what? I was just uh, thinking of waiting for it, uh, the room to fill up, uh, the air to fill up and for the thing to release. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to take a pause uh, we'll for two, that, two seconds. Uh, I have to hit the washroom. I'll be right back. Sorry about this. Yeah. No worries. I'm going to check the food that's cooking. Yay for food. Yeah. Go. I already had three coffees, so I'm not going to grab another coffee, but I'll be right back. I'll grab another drink. Zoom, zoom.
Yeah, they look good. Somebody forgot to mute themselves. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have returned. So MVP of the day is like Pat's dice rolls. <laughs> kind of, yeah. If any of those had screwed up, I, Silas would have been in seriously, <laughs> a seriously bad position. Uh... And model magic sucks. Hmm. It's like you know that like model magic like shape of old foam. Oh, okay. Got this and it's like all cracking. I mean, look at this. Shit. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I can fill it up. It's just an extra yeah. step. I don't want to have to take. Yeah. I made a uh, little uh, lucky horse figurine for my niece. Oh, nice. Can I? Can you like hold that up to the camera more? Or... <sighs> Sorry about that. that was a like that. It's like a horse head. Okay. Horse shoe, cool okay. on it. So You're putting horse heads on people's uh, beds now as they. Yes, on them. my uh, my tiny nieces uh, probably. <laughs> oh, did we lose uh, uh, Annie? Yeah, she's just checking on the food. Oh, okay. Yeah. So as we wait for the chamber to fill up with air and then water, um, things just kind of. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, weren't, yeah. there weren't. There's no water in the chamber. That part, like I said, there's no water kind of blocking your way this time. Yeah. Um, I look over at the new lady. Um, what does she uh, now that I can actually see her? Does she just look like a blue-skinned elf, or is there anything sea elf looking about her? I mean, you you don't you haven't seen sea elves directly. Yep. Uh, I'm wondering, do, uh, are there like webbed fingers or fins or scales or gills? Doesn't appear to be. She's I look over curious as to why you're looking at her so closely and she kind of looks at you suspiciously. Hey, can you breathe water? Because we've got about 100 feet of it above us and only two pearls are breathing. Um, she kind of looks at you strangely. Water? Breathe? Water. Breathe water? Uh, no. Hmm. How long can you hold your breath? Hold breath. Um, in. She kind of holds her hand yep. up as if she's holding her breath. Uh, I'm going to speak right into her head because it auto translates. <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> um, they, um, can you hold your breath? We are very far underwater, and you will need to hold it for a long time for us to swim up. And you see your eyes go wide uh, from... I've spoken into her head before. Uh, still, it's, it's, a, it's a weird experience, and you get the impression that she might not have realized it was in her head before, distracted as she was by everything. Um, uh, she kind of shakes her head. Uh, yes, I, uh, and kind of fills her cheeks with air. Um, mm -hmm. yes, hold your breath in here. Yeah, I, I can, I will. You save me, I will. Um, Man, one more level until I get that thing that would be so useful right now. <laughs> That's why I got to do this now. <laughs> yeah. How long? Uh, I'll ask the others. How, how long can you guys hold your breath normally? <laughs> yeah. 
I was like one minute. Um, Silas has a crappy constitution. The other thing you do remember this particular vent where you came in, the water had become cloudy because you were uh, cutting up a lot of the the stingweed. Yeah, yeah. that was a while ago. Did not actually go the way that um, Gaetano went. And you do remember sure. that Gaetano had the the oil uh, rubbed on his body that he claimed yeah. would help you against the stingweed. Yep. Hey, Annie, uh, didn't you say one time, or when we first came down here, that there's going to be a main entrance? Why don't we use that, if, if there is one? Yeah. I mean, so realistically, map-wise, like, um, yeah. we've been everywhere except for, like, this area, right? Yeah, pumpkin section. Um, Essentially, yeah. So... Direction wise, there's only a little bit of room that we haven't looked at. And we know that this door and this door both have water at them. It's true. So would it be an okay assumption to think that it's that way? And I will mention that the door was open when the uh, sea devils came in and it's like, oh, water came in. Um. How about a uh, a survival check? We'll make it a group survival check as you're all trying kind of contributing to this idea. Ah, oh, I closed my character sheet. Damn it. Hey, Silas, who has very little survival experience, goes. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Thirteen. Holy moly! Oh, wow! Holy natural. moly! Uh, as uh, okay. Annie is laying out this idea and kind of working at it from the logistics point of view. And, and I kind of imagine that we get that interior view of Annie's head, the sort of map projection view of her going, okay, if we entered this way and we went that way, that means these two doors are the only ones we haven't checked and they both have water behind them. And uh, meanwhile, Medrick is like, what about we just go through the door? I think I'm pretty sure that, that must lead outward somewhere. Uh, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that I can get through this door and, uh, 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 Silas is is sort of well. If they if they came in through there and they were already full of water, that must be the way. So Annie comes up with the idea, and the other two confirm it. Uh, oh the, God, we just mansplained it. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> like Annie comes up with it, and Medrick and, and uh, Silas just look at each other and repeat it and go, "Yeah, that was great." Yeah, so, totally. So for Annie, <laughs> Medric, and I'm just like for for Annie, <laughs> there there is probably a lesson that you would have heard when you were younger, and it sort of bore out a little bit, which is someone will agree with your idea if you make them think it's theirs. Yeah. <laughs> so really, what happened here is Annie just manipulated the other two into agreeing with her. Cool. But yes, that was totally my idea, though. I mean, look at that twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can try to open this door. I guess that's where you were because you all kind of gathered. I've moved the icons, but um, I can yeah, do that. yeah, that would have been our place. So yeah, we're actually right next to it. Yeah, because that was where you had come in and decided. And this was kind of funny because I wasn't sure what was going to happen at the very beginning if you guys are going to go left or go right. And it turns out you went deeper in, which was awesome. So now um, you do know that to open that door, you will have to flood this room. Yeah. Who can who can hold their actually? Let's take a couple of minutes and everybody hold your breath. Okay. We need to know who can hold their breath the longest. Okay. And I'll say that in uh, New Girl's head, uh, just so there's no confusion. And then, uh, and then Silas passes out 60 seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> or you, you can just open your mouth. <laughs> well, actually, you can't hold your breath because it's being generated from within your mouth. All right. Okay, Shit. well, take the pearls out then. Okay. Uh, it would be uh, Silas first. Uh, the yeah. Stela, the new girl, uh, seems to give out just after uh, Silas does. Uh, and I think between Medric and Annie, what is your constitution scores? Uh, uh, plus three one. So Annie would be next, and then Medric. And surprisingly, uh, uh, Harriet is actually before Annie. So to wrap that up, 
Silas, Stela, uh, Harriet, Annie, Medrick. Ha! Uh, so Silas and Stela should get the pearls. Yeah, that would suggest that the two of us are the, the least able to get out on our own. Oh, uh, wait. I don't win a thing. I, I lose a thing. God damn it. Um, and yeah, if we've got... Uh, We've got a couple of uh, uh, ceramic pots with us for everyone else, then. Hmm. Yeah, right, the pots. Um, well, then, one. yeah, I think that's the best there... we can prepare because I don't have anything that'll help. Um, but yeah, no, the. Uh, if we can double back and go get pots for the other three of us. Yeah, we should yeah. be able to. I mean, we're gonna have a fair bit of time before we can leave. Well, you yeah. you feel like you were given the escort out. You're not sure if you have the free run of the place. Yeah. yeah. Or I did bring uh, like those uh makeshift bombs that I made. I can just like toss those out and reuse the bottles. I mean, we're not gonna be throwing them at the creatures anymore because yeah. they're gonna kill us. Yeah, they give you, yeah they give you a few bottles worth anyways. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep the chamber pot. The oily bottles will be a little weird to drink out of, but you can certainly try. Would like emptying a water skin and using that to breathe work? It would yeah. give you a couple of swallows of air, yeah. Yeah, you could probably, uh, yeah, breathe a bunch of air into it and then cap it, and then it would hold it. Yeah, uh, that certainly but... works. Okay. So you uh, you start to make these arrangements to pull it all together and, and uh, breathe into it. Who's getting the so pearls? I'm emptying the bombs because those might be useful later. Hmm? Oh, the bombs? Okay, yeah. So keep the bombs? Yeah. Empty your water skin and use that. Right. Just for fun, uh, we'll throw... Oh, drink my water skin because I don't want to waste the good water. <laughs> I will but throw yeah. that on as Stela for the moment. Just so we have her on there. Don't really need her, but that's okay. We know it's it's all it's all theater of the mind now, anyway. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and well, we can show Stella how to use the the uh, the pearl. Just here's how you breathe. Swallow. <laughs> hmm? No. <sighs> Place under tongue. Uh huh. <laughs> And you see her kind of open up her mouth and and I put mine in and show her mirroring uh, Silas, uh, kind of licking around the pearl as well and kind of feeling it out with her tongue in this somewhat unsettling manner, uh, and then eventually kind of shoving it underneath. And then you hear the, well, you you kind of you don't hear it, but you know that sound because inside your own mouths when this thing grabs on, it's a little bit like, like when you chew on something and there's a little bit of bone or something and there's like. <clears throat> Kind of feeling. Uh, that's the worst. <laughs> and she, her eyes go wide when it happens. Um, Silas, make a perception check. Uh... Okay. Oh, nice. hey. Just for a second, as her eyes go wide and the little pain surprises her, her eyes go wider than you expected, and then kind of close back down. Oh, hmm. weird pain, pain thing. Bah, 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 bah. Fab air. Weird. Still is kind of special. Can we figure out, like, uh, or if I did, like, an insight check, could I figure out what language she speaks? Um, I'd say that's more... Yeah, or would yeah. that be more of a thing <laughs> i mean it's it's insight is kind of weird because it's more of it's almost more history okay weirdly enough so history yeah sure oh no history is minus one. <laughs> oh yeah i can't <laughs> you, have, you have no idea you've never heard of a speech pattern quite like that it must be really weird in sedata yep and she didn't respond to um to elvish which is weird that's what you know yep or at least she didn't answer you. So. Something sketchy about her. 
You want to provoke the, uh, here's a weird phrase that I now have to say. Do you want to provoke the sphincter <laughs> to begin the flood? I thought we were going out through the main entrance. But oh, know, yeah, we were going through the main entrance. But in order yep. to open the door, there cannot be air in this room. Oh, right. All right, who wants, who wants to put something in the hole? <laughs> I'll enchant my staff and start poking the sphincter. Okay. <laughs> it only takes a little while to provoke it. You've done this a couple of times now, and kind of, it's a little bit weirder from this side than the other with the pressure of the water on top as opposed to below. But after a few yeah. seconds, uh, it does begin to begrudgingly open. And then once it starts to open, it's like it's uh, a, a threshold has been passed and it opens wide. The air begins to, to rush out of the room and being filled with water, both from below and occasionally from above. Um, as the water flows upward, both Harriet and Stella uh, look at the water, um, not in fear, but more in kind of expectation. Uh, and uh, uh, what did you give Harriet to, to breathe with? Anything? Or just going to rely on holding your breath? We, we would have offered um, probably one of the water skins. Yeah. Okay. Um, she looks at it kind of funny and looks at the water. I don't I don't think I need it. If you're sure. And as the, the just, water hold on, of, just in case. She she gets she grabs it and it's kind of bobbing in the water beside her full of air. Uh, and as the water kind of moves upward, she suddenly dips her head below it without the water skin. And you see her kind of in the water seem to come to a decision and open her mouth, taking in a, a gulp of the water. After a second, little bubbles start to appear on the back of her neck and pop up into the air. And she kind of leaps up out of the water. I, I can breathe this. I, I didn't, I didn't know I could do that. I mean, I've always liked the water. I've always loved to swim. It's always been easy, but why can I? It is your ancestry. Well, life realizations a bit later, we probably yeah. should be going. <laughs> what Andy said. <laughs> As Andy comes to the practical point of it, Medric, I assume you're on well, door duty once more. The water skin, I'll take the water skin, either for myself or for somebody else. <laughs> Harry, or, hand, yeah. Harry hands it over. Harry. Um, you've been on door duty, Medric. I'm assuming right. that's your, your job again. I will push the buttons in the exact same way that the, spy, the, that the spider creature earlier pushed the buttons. They move easily with that satisfying sound now carried by the water around you. Godunk. You reach down, grab onto the handle. It moves easily, coming a little bit loose, and then you open it. To almost no pressure change at all as the water inside the room has now reached essentially the same pressure level is what's outside in the hallway you proceed down that hallway i don't have them on the map here but you will pass by a couple more of the sea devils but they don't appear to be aggressive they are ready with weapons but they seem to just watch you as you pass on by there is I give them side eye <laughs> <laughs> side eye is given uh, gentlemen there is a, a, a sense as they watch, in particular watching uh, Harriet move by, uh, almost uh, as though there's a sort of sense of, of, well, there goes our prize kind of thing. One of them even licking his lips. As you move further in or further along, you reach a T-junction. Judging by the way the water is flowing, realize that the, the, the southwestern junction is where the water is coming in from slowly come out a long tunnel at the end of the tunnel there is a door but not a solid door this time it's a door made up of of wood slats designed to let the water pass back and forth it is unlocked and two more of the sea devils stand outside as if standing on guard you pass by them I will, yeah i walk up to them and and uh 
make sure that everyone can get out. I will leave last. And they do not move, but they are wary as if <laughs> expecting to be attacked. After a few tense moments, you see yourselves in what looks like a tunnel, but then you realize what it is is just a deep groove in the earth uh, where the uh, stingweed has not been placed, or rather it probably has been harvested, and the rest of the stingweed curves over it, almost like a tunnel, and then you realize you couldn't have seen it from above unless you'd stumbled upon that particular spot. After a few more seconds, you find yourselves at the end of that seaweed forest and are free. Uh, I tell people, uh, try not to, uh, just in their heads again, try not to swim up too fast. It may cause issues, but go as fast as you need to. Harriet. Does the have a bench? <laughs> Sorry? Is the Benz a thing in D and D? I asked Mark a couple of sessions ago, and he said yes, but yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. that name so much. But it, it gets weird when you have magic that can overcome most of the issues that the Benz would would actually produce, mm -hmm. because technically you have oxygen generation at a rate that keeps you alive and probably keeps the pressure normalized as well. I, the two of us with pearls probably don't have to worry about it, but everyone else who's not using magic is going to have to. As soon as you clear the stingweed, a Harriet kind of surges on ahead, and you get the sense this newfound freedom in her, where she seems to no longer have the same worry as a typical swimmer would through water. She's not worried about holding her breath anymore. And in fact, you can see a small trail of bubbles coming from the back of her neck as she moves and is, in fact, a great swimmer, perhaps even preternaturally so. Stela also seems to be at home in the water. Every once in a while, I'll grab from the air skin. <laughs> What's that? I'll grab like a swig from the air skin. <laughs> okay. Yep. Another cheek full of the uh, somewhat. Uh, actually, no. It was only water. It wasn't. It wasn't actually wine, so it's not going to taste too bad. Uh, and and keep yourself uh, in motion. Stela, as I said, also seems to be somewhat more comfortable now in the full water. Every once in a while, you see Stela uh, kind of open her mouth. And a, and a bubble of air comes out, and she seems to be surprised by that process, uh, and even uh, laughing a little bit, although it doesn't really translate too well underwater, although the laugh is a little high-pitched, weirdly enough. Uh, you swim up. Are you going to swim up to the surface first, or are you going to swim over where the boat was? You don't have a lot of... Surface, <laughs> surface first, because yeah, the boat was a fair, a, lot of time. a fair distance away. Uh, you swim up towards the surface... Uh, just as the uh, the sun has crested beyond noon at this point, for you, uh, Medric, it is a welcome feeling as the warmth floods you, uh, almost as though to say hello. Um, for the other two, uh, it, it's just a, a, a freedom from the oppressive darkness underneath. For Stela, who keeps kind of just below the crest of the water, it seems almost almost like an afterthought to to come up above it. Uh, but on the, on the other side, uh, Harriet breaches the water, strongly swimming to the point where she actually leaps up almost halfway out of the water for coming back down to, to, uh, to keep on the surface. Uh, from across the water, you hear uh, a now familiar voice. Ahoy, kids! I'll be there in a minute! And you, see, you see Gaetano at the uh, oars of your boat uh, trying to move you over in your direction. You can see also that uh, Joan is uh, a little drier, having been outside for a little while, but looks very relieved to see you all. The boat comes over, you all climb aboard, and we'll pick up as you arrive back at the lighthouse, perhaps, next week. How about that? A little bit of a shorter session. We do have a hard out today. But I want to thank all of you for joining me and for playing. Uh, any, any last thoughts before we, uh, before we wrap up today? I'm glad nobody died. <laughs> anyway. I mean, I mean the next thing is probably going to be called Silas has some splaining to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Silas is happy for the wash of water to remove any of the concern that he had physically displayed. Uh, yes. I, I, I would imagine there's lots of questions to be asked. 
well. We can ask those next week. Uh, I have I have unfortunately failed to add more articles to the uh, World Anvil site. I'll be I'll be I'll be flogging myself later and typing up a few of them that I have in mind. Uh, but we do have a World Anvil site that we are are building for this. If you're watching this and you have questions about uh, the world, that will be one of the places we'll try to answer some of those that aren't coming up in the in the game itself. We also have a YouTube channel where you can find this and previous episodes in case you're wondering or you want to go back and watch them again and go, what the hell just happened? Because I know occasionally I have to do that. That's at youtube.com slash ENCAF1. We are streaming live. If you're catching this on YouTube, we stream live on Sundays. Uh, because of the way the weather had been, we started at 11 a.m. Atlantic time on Sundays. Uh, we will probably be transitioning back to maybe our normal time because uh, I see the weather starting to no longer become quite as sweaty. Uh, although I think under my brilliant lights and with all the pressure of running a game, I'm sweating anyway, so it may not make a difference to me. Oh, we have invasion of another kitty who didn't want to didn't want to be on camera, camera shy. Um, I can be finally finishing eating her food. So there you go. Takes, uh, takes your time. Twitch.tv slash ENCIF1 to see the, the, uh, the live streams, and you're welcome to join us there. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah. Anything else, folks, people want to say? If you're on YouTube, Facebook page? Facebook page. Facebook page. page. Yes. Legend, Legend of the Drown Isles. That is indeed Check it. Check it out. There's also Watchers of the Drown Isles. We can join as a group and we'll chat. Theoretically, we'll chat. I haven't really chatted that much. Somebody's going to respond eventually. Yeah, exactly. And if you want to check out the pictures, uh, there's a Pinterest site of mine called Silver Moon Bay. Awesome. As the ones from this game. Awesome. Cool. And you'll you'll get to see the the picture that uh, that uh, Pat had picked out for what the Mother Hydra illusion would be. So you'll get to see if I was anywhere close to being correct in my description. All right, folks. That's it for this week. Have a great one. Try not to drown. I guess <laughs> maybe that's is that the. Uh, <laughs> Is that the uh, what do you yes. try not to drown? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> get it right down. Uh, probably not. Uh, well, we shall see you in any case, one way or the other, high and dry next week. <laughs>